do that. I, I know. <laughs> Just a few announcements this morning before we get started. Good morning. One more time, y'all. Good morning. <laughs> oh, goodness. It is definitely Advent. There are a lot of things going on as we await the new thing that God will bring to birth in our lives. We've got a couple of announcements this morning. Please uh, notice in your bulletin the envelope for the poinsettias. Um, if you would like to purchase one in honor of someone or in memory of someone, please fill out the, the envelope or the card and do that. They're $10 each, and the envelope should be found in your bulletin. Uh, another reminder when it comes to finances is that we are available for you all to turn in any kind of pledge that you would like uh, for the coming year as your offering. We try to get an idea of how much we will be able to budget. So if you would, you can go online or you can stop by the office or you can write a note and place it in the offering when it comes. Okay. Um, Vivaldi's Gloria that got snowed out uh, last weekend is rescheduled for February the 3rd. So if you all would like to put that on your calendar, February the 3rd we will have this beautiful, beautiful gift of music. Also on Christmas Eve, you are invited to join the choir. If you are going to be here, we have students that are gone and we have folks that usually come in. So if you would like to sing just that one time, we won't hogtie you or anything, but uh, please feel free to join the choir meeting at 10 o'clock to rehearse for the 10.45 p.m. service on Christmas Eve. And Justin, where are you? Um, they will meet downstairs, correct? In the choir room. So with that being said, uh, Sally Jackson has got um, an announcement for us as well. Good morning. I was just asked to speak, so I quickly wrote down some notes. Back in the mid-90s, Bobby McMillan asked a Sunday school class of young families to assist the hand-in-hand -hand Sunday school class, which was at that time elderly ladies, with decorating the Christmas tree. It was there that I learned the story of Christmas, each a monogram of Christ. One very special Christmas was titled The Hand of God. It depicts God's God holding our world in his hands. When the Christmas began to become in need of repair, a group of St. Johners joined together in 2009 to repair and replace these treasures. This past year, under the creative design of Donnie Smith, the hand of God has been redone and it was placed on the tree this morning by the Chris Monners. Today we mark the week of joy and I joyfully am thankful for this group of ladies and for our beautiful Chris Mons and I hope you'll take the opportunity to come and look at them closely after any service. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. And those of you also who have worked with the Chrismons, what a gift you give to St. John's. So thank you so much for that. One last announcement is that we do have a service coming up on the 21st at 6.30. You'll see it in your bulletin, but this is called Blue Christmas. It is a time for folks who aren't holly jolly all over. Uh, maybe you've had a loss or a change of job or a death, a divorce. Um, maybe you're just down. This time of the year sometimes brings that out in people. So please be invited and please consider coming on um, December the 21st at 6.30. 
And now let us worship God. Please stand as you are able. A greeting based on Psalm 43. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to, do, and to your dwelling. And I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the heart. O God, my God.
Surely, God is my salvation. I will trust and will be not afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my light. God has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord. Call on the Lord's name. Make the deeds of the Lord known among the nations. Proclaim that the name of the Lord is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, who has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. It's getting closer. We feel it. The days are shorter, but the lights burn brighter. We're listening. We're eager to hear good news. We've gathered together in this house of joy. We're here to praise God with our hearts and voices. We're here to praise God with beautiful music. We're here to praise God with our whole being. We're here to pray. Uh, today we light the candle of joy. The night is passing. Joy is coming with the morning. and I want to tell you a story. It comes from F. Murray Abraham, who was the lead, played the lead in the movie Gandhi. He also played Salieri in Amadeus. He's a well-known actor with a Syrian background. He tells that his grandfather had a favorite parable that I want to share with you. A sparrow heard that the sky was falling. So the sparrow fell down on his back and stuck his little legs straight up in the air. Along came a king's horseman and said to him, What are you doing? And the sparrow answered, I'm holding up the sky. To which the horseman said, Do you think with those tiny little legs you can hold up the sky? And the sparrow said, we do what we can. Since 1985, St. John's United Methodist Church has been doing everything it can to meet the needs of the hungry and the poor in this town. One way we are doing that since 1985 is through our Tuesday voucher ministry. Every week we have the garden room full of families that are needing food. We work with the South Plains Food Bank to provide them baskets of food. And I don't mean just baskets. They get about three big boxes of staples, fresh produce, other foods that are, they can live on or try to live on for about a month. On that same Tuesday, they also can get hygiene items. We give them out from our own supply of that that you help bring. We give toilet paper, toothpaste, shampoo, all kinds of basic hygiene needs that we take for granted. We give out about 400 rolls of toilet paper a week for families. And with this past month here at St. John's, we had 380 families to come over that month to receive a food voucher, which they take out to the food bank and get a supply of food for the month. It cost us at the church $8 a week 
per person or per family for those vouchers. The vouchers don't buy the food. They help the food bank and its staff and the administration to supply it. The food comes from your contributions like you can share and the contributions we make through are here, and also we get government aid. But adding that up, we're 380 families. We did what we could one month. The cost of that over that month was $3,040. One month. So I'm here to ask you, get on your backs, put your feet up, and do what you can. We can help people for whom the sky falls a lot in this community. So do not think that what you do with your contributions don't do that much. Now we need every one of us to think about, can we give an extra $8 every once in a while for the food voucher? Six of it will go to the food voucher ministry. Two of it will go into the hygiene fund. Now, I want you to do something with me. I don't sing that well, but we're going to sing together the last verse of hymn 221 in the bleak midwinter. Look at the words of that. Keep in mind the sparrow on its back with its legs up as we sing this. What I can, I give. Give my heart. One way you do that is through our food voucher ministry. We need your money. We need your help. We are desperately in need of new volunteers to come and be an interviewer, to come and welcome. You can make a difference. What can we give? We give what we can. Thank you. We come this morning to share our joys and our concerns. A joy and a concern is what Bobby just brought to us. Those who are poor, who are hungry especially at this time of the year when it is cold and resources are low. God, in your mercy and graciousness, hear our prayer. Would you have a joy or a concern that you would share? Jared. Wonderful. Welcome, Gregory Allen Horsford. God, in your graciousness, hear our prayer. So for the family of uh, Bill Hartwell, who used to be here at St. John's, uh, God in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. For those in Yemen and all of the, the people who have had such struggles, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Cranford family, David's dad is not uh, well. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Betty? For wisdom for our country's leaders as children and families are separated and as people are trying to work to what freedom means for them and for their child. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we begin the petitions um, we will have some time of silent meditation, just a brief time. But I would engage, I entreat you to engage in that time for yourself of prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, troubled and confused in a confusing, troubled world. We try to make sense out of the conflicting voices. We search to find one word that will make sense and give meaning to the rest. Come near, Holy One. Touch our hearts and souls that we may recognize your life enfolded around ours. Express yourself to us, in us, through us. We pray in the name of the Christ child. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share with one another the joy and the peace of Christ.
Good morning. Student Ministries is an exciting ministry in itself. We get to celebrate every day with students. We celebrate with students as they achieve milestones in life, such as graduating from college. But at the same time, we recognize that it's sad for us at the same time, but it's exciting. It's sad that as part of their family, for the few years they are here, that they leave, but we are excited to see the wings they grow and the wonderful people they turn into. Haley is going to do a beautiful thing for one graduate this morning. Jacqueline, you gotta come here. <laughs> I'll talk a little bit about you while you walk up here. So I started here, like in May? April. So I have had a couple months to get to know Jacqueline, and let me tell you, it's a real treat. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was got a Facebook notification, and it said, Jacqueline wants to be your friend. I literally said, I love this person. So that's a good, that's a good thing to be, right? So I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Tell a little bit about you, your major, your minor, and then what you're planning on doing. Uh, my name is Jacqueline. Um, I'm from McAllen, Texas. Came here um, to Tech. I am one of the first um, graduates from a companion animal science degree. So instead of focusing on livestock, um, we focus more on um, obviously companion animals, so dogs, cats, hamsters, birds, stuff like that. Um, I'm very heavily involved in um, the dog training part of it, um, so much so that I ended up adopting a dog while I was training. <laughs> Um, I also got a minor in psychology here at Tech. Um, my future plans is starting January, I actually am starting grad school in Corpus Christi uh, for mental health counseling. And my goal eventually is to do animal assisted therapy, um, which again is really new, not a lot of people do it, um, but it's thought that maybe using animals in with your practice that um, your clients will feel more comfortable, they open up to you more. Um, so it's just a better way, like more friendly kind of environment. So that's my angle. Awesome. I, wrote, I wrote something for you. I don't really know what this is called, where you write someone's name out and then write things that... Good. <laughs> we learned something new today. Yeah, that one. So your name's not like Sam or Max, or not that your name would be Max, or like a three letter, so it's kind of long, so bear with me. Jacqueline, J, joyful to be around. A, amicable, amicable, some people say. C, caring of all people. Q, questioning for deeper meaning. U, unique. E, enjoyable. L, lover of animals. I, intelligent. N, Neat and nice. You are very neat. I've noticed this about you. E, educative. You're very smart and you're using it. And I've really enjoyed getting to know you. And I appreciate you. And congrats. And Reckham Tech, well, guns fire. What do they say? Guns up. Oh, yeah. Congrats. Congrats. Oh. Oh, and then you can keep. Okay. But we have to do one thing that I told her we would do, which is a new tradition. Every time someone graduates, we're taking a selfie. Oh, All nice. right. <laughs> nice. So you can remember us. I'll leave. I'll get off the stage. Awesome. And I just want to say that those people who say amicable are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a part of our tradition here. Uh, with people who've been a part of our church family. We've been their family. So we want to join together as, our, as uh, Jacqueline's family uh, to bless her and to send her on her way with our blessing. Uh, all of you who have gotten to know her and family and friends and acquaintances and, and uh, staff uh, who want to participate in this, we'd like to invite you to come forward. We're going to ask... Jackie, to, yeah, you go by Jackie too, don't you? Yeah. Uh, to kneel and we'll surround her and just offer this prayer of blessing together. So will you come?
couple of minutes here. People are having to come all the way from the back. I think this is family coming here, too. Fantastic. We're happy you're here. Come ahead. All right. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give thanks for the gift of this day. Gathered on the edge of a milestone, we celebrate with Jacqueline this moment of achievement. Strange and surreal like a high peak where she can look back over the way she's come and ahead to where she has not yet walked. We share her joy and feel the pride of her friends and family. Your great spirit shares this tiptoe moment with us as we strain to see ahead, expectant, grateful, alive, feeling whole, and entering the first days of the rest of our lives. Pour out your spirit upon Jacqueline to guide her on her journey, shining your unique light on her pathway. May she continue to learn the ways of love, justice, faith, and hope, and may her life continue to bring light and life wherever she goes. We bless her in your name. The Old Testament lesson this morning 
comes from the book of Zephaniah in the Old Testament, and it can be found on page 877 of your pew Bible, <coughs> excuse me, pew Bible if you choose to follow along. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you and turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory, who rejoices over you with gladness, who will renew you with love, who will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home. At the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord for all who long for Christ's appearing. Good morning. May the children please join us. Good morning, guys. What, what is the theme today? Joy. And what does joy mean? Happiness. Happiness. Kindness. Kindness. Like if you're um, donating money to make people happy. Yes, that is very good. Now, what are things in y'all's life that bring y'all joy? Of Jesus Christ. The birth of Jesus Christ. Christmas. Christmas. What brings you joy? Family. What brings you joy, Ryan? Snuggy head. Snuggy head. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's the farthest I think it's, it's been thrown. <laughs> so today, we did something that brought us joy, didn't we? And I'm going to let you explain what we did. Are you ready? We made snowflakes. We made snowflakes. So if you all want to experience joy at your home later, and you don't know how to make snowflakes, here's a mini tutorial. So first you get a piece of paper. You fold the top right. Yeah, the top right the top right to the bottom left, but it won't go all the way because you're trying to make a square. You'll cut this extra stuff off. Then, then you fold it once, then you fold it twice. And then you start cutting. Now while Jaden makes something beautiful, we're going to go and spread joy to everyone out, most people, maybe not everyone, out in the congregation. So y'all ready? Go spread it. So you can make any design. I'm, I'm just going to 
make hearts all over it. I might make some little ones, might make some big ones. You can make anything on it. So on one of them that they're passing out, I made a little, I made a Christmas tree on it and it was very difficult. Some of them might be difficult. I went with the old school, like, cutting the triangles. I thought that was good, but. And then you can make some triangles, anything you want. And then. And you can just do anything on it. All right, guys. Time to come on back up with the bag of joy. Come on. Come on. And look how beautiful that is. That all I think that deserves. All right. Here we go. Now, joy is easy to spread, right? So is bad things. But let's this season choose joy. One more question before we pray. How can you spread joy today? Dear God, joy means kindness, love, and you think of other people. This is the season where we spread joy and love. Help us to remember that we can always spread joy everywhere we go. Amen. Amen. <laughs> took some encouragement from uh, Jacqueline telling us about her degree and her uh, graduate studies as well. It just it, it reminded me that uh, people uh, just continue to respond to a calling and those uh, uh, spaces in our society and our culture and the needs that we have continue to get filled in by people in very creative ways in, in, in uh, professions and, and occupations that we would have never even thought of before. So it's kind of uh, encouraging to hear uh, university students who are graduating and, and talking about going out and serving in the world in these fresh and creative ways, and we're very, very proud of you, Jack. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. That text, of course, is from the beloved Christmas carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And what Christian doesn't uh, cherish that image of eternal light beaming from the ramshackle stable where the Christ child dozes in the arms of his mother. I mean, who doesn't celebrate the hope that his birth brings to a world where hope so often seems in short supply? So hope, yes. But fears? That Carol uses that word, fears, in the same line as the word hopes, and says that hopes and fears are met in that birth in Bethlehem. 
What has fear to do with his birth? The history of the carol itself provides a hint. Old Little Town of Bethlehem was actually written in 1868. That means that this year is the 150th anniversary of that beloved Christmas carol. It was written by Phillips Brooks, who was the longtime uh, rector of Boston's Trinity Church, 1868. That means that the Civil War had ended only three years earlier. And yes, Lee and Grant had signed their peace accord at Appomattox. And yes, battle-weary veterans from both sides had laid down their arms and had trudged back home. But half the nation still lay in ruins. And the notorious Andrew Johnson, who many say is the worst POTUS the nation has ever seen, although some of you may have other nominations for that title, at any rate, Andrew Johnson seemed to be doing his best to dismantle the rights for former slaves that had been won at such a terrible cost. I mean, on both north and south home fronts, families had been decimated. Veterans had come home maimed physically and psychologically. In in 1868, it gave Americans some comfort to, to picture the humble Bethlehem stable as the place where hope and fear meet and where hope emerges the ultimate victor. What do we fear this Advent in 2018? That refrain of, "Mm -mm, isn't that awful? That's a refrain that our culture pounds into our hearts and minds almost every day. I mean, just the other day while I was working on this sermon, the news broke that a seven-year-old girl died in border control custody, died of dehydration and shock. Mm Mm-mm. Isn't that awful? We don't vanquish fear by denying it or avoiding it. Our Advent journey can actually be helped by the frank acknowledgement of our fears. Fear has always been as much a part of the Advent and Christmas story as peace and joy. It's just that you don't get that in the dominant version of the coming holiday. In the most familiar version of our holiday season, it's all light, no shadow. It's all merriment and no malevolence. And and those who do dare to turn for just a moment from the relentless a yuletide cheer to acknowledge some all too human, all too common difficulty, those become vulnerable to criticism, you know, for not having the obligatory Christmas spirit. You old Scrooge, bah humbug. Walter Wongeren captures the shallowness of this kind of Christmas merriment with these words. He writes, Mindlessly do the bells of celebration jingle for Christmas. Meaninglessly do carols repeat their tinny 
joys in all the malls of America. No richer than soda pop is every sentimentalized Christmas special on television. Fearless is the world at play with godly things, but godlessness is in its heart. If God is a laughing Santy, why should we be afraid? But God is no laughing Santy. I mean, Christian culture may be quick to domesticate God into some benevolent philanthropist. A, a, a kindly figure, a lot like Santa Claus. But that's not the full biblical witness. God is to be loved, yes. But God is also to be revered. And not, not like a threatening tyrant, but revered more like an acclaimed Sherpa whose instructions and correction can be the difference between life and death. Through the advent of Jesus, the original witnesses and countless others since have become persuaded that God's presence with us is more Sherpa-like. It's Sherpa-like because... It doesn't eliminate the dangers that are rightly feared. But his presence leads us. And sometimes corrects us because the joy of the summit is always on the other side of fear. It's it's always that way. It's by moving through our fears to the joy that awaits on the other side of our fears that we begin to grasp the triumphant good news of the Christ child's birth in our world. Phillips Brooks was right. Not only our hopes, but also our fears are met in Emmanuel, in God with us. Watching a Charlie Brown Christmas is is probably a holiday tradition for many of us. And a favorite scene is when Linus stands on a bare stage and recites Luke's story of the birth of Jesus. And there's a feature of that scene that's not always noticed by a lot of us. Just before Linus begins his recitation, he drops his security blanket. Have you ever noticed that? Anyone familiar with the character of Linus knows that anytime he is separated from his security blanket, he just dissolves into a a frenzied angst. Linus simply cannot be without his blanket, except in this moment. When he's standing on stage, reciting the story of Jesus' birth, with the Christ child on his lips and in his mind and in his heart, he he doesn't need it in that moment. And I think this is the message of the season for which our preparations continue here on this third Sunday of Advent. The heart of Christmas is is that this divine word, uh, this uh, uh, divine truth that that became flesh and, and lived among us. And even on this side of 2,000 Easter's, we're still learning era by era, 
generation by generation, day by day, sometimes incident by incident, we're still learning that Bethlehem is the place where hope contends with fear and hope wins because God is with us. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let us pray. Oh God, you do come to bring us joy. And so please bless these gifts that we offer, that they might bring joy to the world and to those who do not feel joy or light. Bless them in the name of the child, the Christ. Amen.
So for our acts of faith this week, I love that image of the Sherpa. Because you know, there are things on a mountain climb that can actually kill you. And, uh, but those hazards, fearful as they may be, aren't signs that you will not climb that mountain. The Sherpa helps you understand how to navigate those fearful hazards and reach the summit anyway. Here's the act of faith for this week. Consider that that thing that is uh, filling your heart with concern or fear may not be a sign that you will not reach the summit. As an act of faith this week, look for the presence of that divine... My goodness. I'll do it this way. The pre- you can probably hear me. Look for the presence and the possibility of that divine Sherpa in the midst of that, who is actually not telling you to stop, but showing you how to navigate that fearful thing so that you can go on. How about that? All right. As we uh, uh, offer our hearts and our commitments of faith uh, to God, let us sing also this hymn of faith. Join your voices together and lift your voices together. Now hear this benediction. Now may God turn our days to joy, that we may serve God and our neighbors with full heart. May we go from this place filled with a sense of expectancy and wonder as we continue to prepare for the amazing blessings of the holy birth.